All right, this might be the last installment of real-time videos for this project. Kind of doing a little bit of pallet in my cup. I'm actually going to or pallet on a piece of paper as well. I'm being lazy though and don't want to switch the camera for y'all and have to set it back. So. Give me just a second. I'm going to get started on this last color here. I have some different thoughts and ideas on this. Again, practicing with things I haven't done. I really wanted that to be the lightest color and then this design I'm doing today to be kind of a medium, but it's not how it worked out because I made a mistake. make mistakes folks I believe we all do someone let me know if I'm wrong I don't know if the heater in the background here is too much noise it's got a little blower going there I did order some curtains the other day to put up here in the shop and I'm hoping that those will help out with the echoey sound I got going on pallet in the brush every time you see me go away so basically uh, do a stroke pallet the brush do a stroke pallet the brush that really helps a lot do that lines a little rough not as smooth as I'd like it to be it kind of retrains the hairs whenever you go and you palette so I'm turning the brush a little bit with the color and then whenever I go and palette it kind of puts those hairs back where they were before turning that brush during the times I turned the brush that time around I kind of just pivoted off my finger it's all right that line's a little longer than I want it so I'm gonna use my smudge tool here to kind of push it back just a hair back to where I wanted it to be this color I'm using probably looks kind of white, but it is far from white. I started off with white and I added to it light blue, which is what the base color was for the blue on this panel. And then I added to it tan, which was the base color for that color. Um, and then I kind of adjusted it from there with some imitation gold. I'll show you here in a second. Kind of what I was after for color, why I did what I did. The frame that this is going in is I have an off-white. So I'm kind of basing it off of that. I didn't want it quite as bright as that. So it's just a little darker. But it's based off of that color. Talked about in the video where I was doing the pencils on this. A little bit about what it was I was trying to do with design. Used a, well, it's not a Stabilo, I use an Omnichrome pencil. It's like a Stabilo, it's a water soluble pencil. I don't always draw designs off, but I was trying to come up with some new design elements that are new to me, or at least stretch my ideas a little bit. 
I'm going to have to adjust this just a little bit to pull this curve. I've got a table in my way outside of the camera. You know, I'm working on these designs on Mondays, if I can, I've set those aside for me to work on my own projects on Mondays. Now, I don't know if you can tell up here, it's a little boogery. In other words, it's not a great connection. Yeah, come out from this angle. Clean it up a little bit. If we don't mess it up a little bit, my paint's a little too thin on the brush at the moment. Add reducer whenever I uh, palette sometimes, not all the time. Do it by feel. Figure that out. The more you stripe, the more you'll figure out that feel there. But Sometimes when I add reducer, I add just a little too much. Well, that's what I did there. All right. I'm actually going to turn this upside down because I want the bottom of this shape. If you see how this curves and curves up, I want this to curve and curve up that direction. I might have even gone a little too far before, so we'll push it back again. If it will, might have let it sit too long. Get that smudgy off of there. It kind of surprises me the feedback that I've heard about these real time videos here. <laughs> Having people seem to really enjoy it. I figured this would be probably the most boring way for me to do a video, but some people like it. And I think it's an opportunity on my end to talk about things that I, it's a little harder to do when you're editing. I think I want that to be a little wider too. I think it kind of goes almost into a little bit of a teardrop at the end of this. Just trying to give it a little bit of thickness here. Might as well go ahead and pull this other curve before I flip it around. You can see I have that brush twisted quite a bit. Could twist it more. There's like a flat spot up here. I'm going to try and get that to go away. Adding a little bulk up here into the right side of this line. And then narrowing down into that to try and fix that little flat spot that was there. Still got it, still don't like it. A little better. I don't know. Sometimes I'm my own worst critic and I don't like stuff that other people think is great. <laughs> Let's go ahead and flip this back over. Try and pull the other side of this. Somebody the other day talking to me about how they struggle with symmetry. And I think if you look when you're pulling a line on one side 
you can look at the other side I'll show you what I mean after I pull this and make sure you're crossing in kind of similar areas. I had uh, some friends over here recently and we did a panel together and I started it and one of them said something about man you didn't put a grid on it because they use a grid to help figure out their symmetry. I typically don't. <laughs> I kind of let the lines I've already put down work as my grid. So what I mean by that is I'm looking over here at where the height is on this. Okay, I might bring this up a little bit more. I've got a line drawn across here. I'm looking at how close I am to it. When I pull this line, I'll look at how far it is away from there. Using the other lines to, to be my guide. So like right now, I could look at how high we are from there to here. Try to match that height over here before I put this down. And then pull my line. Okay. I try to look too at these gaps here and I'm sitting here talking and didn't do that. This, uh, talking and striping is a new challenge. Somebody I see do that frequently, and I'm always super impressed with it. Steve Shazeka does all these live videos where he's talking while he's striping. It is a challenge for me. I can talk some while I stripe, but I'm usually not talking this much. Let's see, I'm going to fatten this down here, trying to see where that black is there. I'm adjusting so that maybe they start in the same way. Maybe they'll look a little bit more alike. I'm using a different magazine right now to pile it on than I normally do. and It's not quite as glossy as what I normally use. I feel like my paint is sort of suffering a little bit because of it. The paint on the palette, so not the paint on the brush. It doesn't seem to be staying as long, like the paper's soaking it up a little bit or something. Good glossy paper is uh, perfect for paletting on. A lot of times I find really good glossy magazines, and the heavier the paper is in it, or the thicker the paper is. Usually the glossier it is, and that's that's the good stuff. In my opinion, somebody else might disagree. I've heard of people that used to pile it on phone books and stuff, and it's not very glossy paper in a phone book. using this lightest color last as far as color is concerned because it's closest to us. Light colors are close, darker colors are the more they recede. In this it's the highest contrast from the black so it jumps out at us more. If I was to put a darker color intersecting it, those intersections break the flow of the line or your eyes concern. Now that line was really fat. I over reduced my paint again. I think I'm going to wipe it off. Just too much for me. I don't mind a little inconsistency whenever it comes to line thickness, but that's way too much for me. And again, that blue and tan are dry because I did those a week ago. I think we can pull from there and be all right. Let me go over this with the dry part. 
get some of that mineral spirits off. Might even take my white pencil and make sure that that line's still gonna be right where I want it to. Somewhere in there. line. I wish this table wasn't in my way on the left. I'm gonna have to come up with something different if I'm striping over here on this easel. As far as where I'm setting my camera, my camera's a little too far or while well, the table's here. It's attached to the table and it's too close. I'm seeing how thin that line got before where this one's matching it. I'm probably going to flip this upside down and come back and go over that line and add a little bit more weight to it. A little bit more thickness. Okay, I'll do that real fast. Might not bother anyone else. But it bothers me. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do this other line. It's kind of neat design wise here. Is my tan was basically one design and tan. Another one, a third one. This time I've got one in white and I'm closing it off right now. It's going to end and then I'm going to do another design in white for the bottom. I'm hoping that with this white design kind of coming in and out of the two different tan ones that it will pull them together so they don't look so much like separate designs. Right now these to me look separate. So hopefully I get some white coming from up here inside of this one down into that and it'll unify it. That's my goal. That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. paint on my brush than I wanted but kind of following trying to keep a somewhat consistent gap between this line that I'm pulling here and the blue line that it's next to. It also gives a little unity that line's not as bad as the one on the other side. Fatten her up just a hair. No stripers that seems like they can have perfectly consistent thicknesses of their lines without having to go back and fix stuff. And man, I'm not there yet, but one day. It is a little easier for me to do that when I don't have the camera kind of right in the way. <laughs> Part of pinstriping for a video. Challenge of having a camera in the way. Um, you know what? 
flip it sideways. Just make this as easy on myself as I can. Again, I see nothing wrong with that. I've heard some people complain about stuff like that, but I think that's a silly thing to complain about. Somebody else turning the panel to paint something. Granted, you can't turn the car. Plus, maybe it's on a rotisserie. But for this, I'm not painting the car. Paint the panel. And it turns. Show you guys some of this cup palette in the tip is going down in the paint kind of drags it up and I give it a little wiggle little wiggle I usually work my way around while I'm doing this and I kind of take a little extra off and that's where I'm at you know I think I am gonna keep this up like this pull some of these makes it easier with this camera in my face otherwise I'd be stepping to my left a little bit the camera's on a table that's there and again I'm being lazy and I don't want to have to readjust the camera constantly Might as well go ahead and do these. Spinning that brush in between my fingers. I'm kind of, if you can see on that line, kind of making it look like it leads up to that blue line. Hopes that your eye will then jump from this to that blue line and keep moving around rather than just stopping in one spot. kind of feel like part of art in general or success in art is how long you can get somebody to look at something. If my eye stops in one spot, probably not going to look as long as I would if my eye keeps moving around the piece. Some of my thoughts. So again, this line kind of comes up to that line, right? Let's uh... Let's turn it this way. connections a little better I'm telling you these are some slow videos y'all watching this long you are true fans <laughs> if you've watched all three of these videos and you're watching this much you are true fans <laughs> I appreciate y'all really appreciate the people that leave comments and Tell me how much they've enjoyed stuff. That's really a lot of why making videos like this. People say that something really helps them. And they tell me why and whatnot. That really is the payoff, I guess, for the time spent on these videos. Seeing or hearing that they're helping other people out really super cool.
it's just motivating somebody and making them pick up a brush that's that's awesome Side of this up a little. Hopefully, sitting here and watching this, somebody work and talk through what they're doing. Hopefully, that gets rid of some of those fears. I guess we have we can't be good enough with something or whatnot. It's all one line at a time, right? I'm just sort of going through at the moment and looking at parts of this that I want to improve just a hair a little bit of touch up details now I want to look at this and see if I think it's done so I'm gonna pause the video I'm gonna clean my brush and look at it and see if I think it needs anything else just stepping back while I went to look at my brush clean it I noticed one thing that I think would help a lot I put a little bit of a teardrop right here I feel like I've got a spot where one would lend really well here. So I'm going to put a teardrop there. Before I do, I'm going to slide it in the frame for a second. Just to see what it looks like like this. And honestly, I don't really think I need to put any more white out this way because we've already got the white of the frame. So if I do that, it might look kind of finished. Maybe something needs to happen in here. Let me get that white down and then we'll look at it. Take this back out of the frame. Pile that brush back. Here we go. Um, it's an awfully thin gap there. I think we're going to start here. side of this is that line pulled a little closer to the right side um, right in here it's got a little wiggle spot I want to get out I'm going to sit here with my pencil just a little bit. I took my brush and I filled it with extra paint and then uh, a little extra spirits. I feel like it needs something right in here. Sometimes one of the things I like to do is do almost like a Nike type symbol. But I don't like that. It breaks the flow that I'm getting here. I love that shape. I don't really want to get rid of that shape. What if something comes in here? Oh, what if I do some sort of check mark type thing here? I think we're going to do that. So I'm not really drawing it out. Just sort of working it out a little bit with the pencil there. Wipe some of that pencil off so it's not too thick. Take my brush, and I think the idea is going to be here. I'm going to scoot this over. Uh, yeah, just scoot it over. I'm going to start with a line that follows this tan. down into this little niche right there and then let's come up here oops stuck my finger on the white off white I'm gonna come like this 
You know what, I'm going to turn this upside down just to clean those up again. Got more room to put my finger down. This is not speed striping, folks. <laughs> Okay. Pile up that brush. Come back up here. Follow that, leaving a little bit of a gap. Come somewhere in there. Let's go from this direction. Lots of spinning around here. I have got to come up with a better spot to put the camera. <laughs> if we're going to do any more of these, maybe if the camera's higher up. Hard thing is trying to find an angle for the camera to where the panel still looks somewhat square. Now, I know I was trying to do things I don't normally do, and this is some moves I normally do, but. One of my go-to fixes for filling in an empty spot in a design. Just bringing a little bit more white there. You can probably see where now it's not like an empty spot over here. It just kind of, the void almost is enough to keep your eye on that empty spot. Dark spot. Whatever we want to call it. I have some friends that we kind of send pictures back and forth, critique stuff while we're working on it. It's kind of a peer group. And one of the people in that group had a piece recently that had an empty spot kind of like that too and we're all kind of going back and forth with ideas that would help Let's see if we can come a little farther over on that the idea is for this line to come up if it was to continue to touch that let's go ahead and negative space I'm fitting this in on this side a little tighter than it was on the other side. It's that symmetry thing. Things aren't perfect. It's rare for them to be perfect when they're hand painted. Even if I'm drawing stuff out. that side of that line. And yes, most of the time I'm going a lot faster with stuff than I am with this. There's a lot of factors for that. If I'm working on someone's car, I'm definitely not spending this slow of a time I'm using moves that I like, moves that I know work. On this, I'm trying to come up with some new ones. Taking my time doing so. Bringing y'all along for the ride. frame back on this. See how it looks. Alright, I did decide to go ahead and put some drop shadows on this, so hopefully 
the lighting is good enough for y'all to see what I'm doing. I've got clear, alpha clear, mixed with a drop or two of black. And I'm just going to go around and where things intersect, I am going to put a little shadow. So like underneath this tan, where it goes over the... blue you know what I'm looking at it and I want it darker so I'm just gonna add another drop of black if I can get one to come out come on baby Boop. a little goes a long way See if it works a little better. Go back over that again. Oh yeah, it shows up a little better. Y'all might not be able to see it, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to do it over the white. You get one shot because it'll streak that white. And it did. <laughs> I'll probably wait. Do all the ones over the white last. Give it a little more time to dry. So again, looking for places where things overlap. Just to make a shadow. That goes over that. Tiny little thing. A lot of people won't see. Those that do be like, oh my gosh. So we're going for that oh my gosh factor. Now we can come underneath these whites. On top of the blue. I just can't intersect the blue yet. Or intersect the white with the clear yet. The last one didn't have enough pigment on it. There we are. I think this just adds to the fun of it. I have fun doing this part. <sighs> Going around looking for places for shadows. Get underneath that tan. Probably just going to leave that one alone. I might even go ahead and end the video here because uh, this might get boring to y'all. It's kind of monotonous. I like the monotonous part of it though. Color like those two right there with the whites going over the tan. They're kind of close er in value. This kind of helps separate it. We'll go ahead and finish out this side before we end. If y'all like this video, hit like. Subscribe if you want to see more, right? If you hang around to the very end, there's going to be some little videos that pop up. If I get that part finished before you watch this if so click one of those go check out something else oh. I finally got monetized on Facebook it kind of seems like a big deal it's pretty cool I think in the past week it's made like three dollars or something so it's not like it's a killer deal but you know, three dollars buy me a soda. <laughs> Maybe a cheeseburger. Cheap cheeseburger. Y'all watching my videos might feed me cheeseburgers. Next time you'll see me, I'll be 400 pounds heavier from eating YouTube paid cheeseburgers. <laughs> 
all right y'all have a good day uh, i'm ending the video